Good afternoon, ladies or gentlemen. In the press, of course, we don't have ladies. And uh, my brother, colleagues. I'm here today to address some of the nagging issues in the state and also to elucidate, throw more light on what is going on thus far, especially when we consider the statements or the media chat by our former governor, who is now the FCT minister, yes, on his own weekend. You will agree with me that the major problem has to do with what I call the pestilence of Godfatherism and its resistance. And the former governor, who is now the FCT minister, finds it difficult. He's yet to come to terms with the fact that while he thought he was going to do a tough term in office by proxy, the man who succeeded him, knowing too well what Rivers people went through in the last eight years, has decided to hew us out of that mountain of despair and frustration. I'm talking of the present governor in the person of Sim Fubara. He was his DFA while I was in office, before I resigned. Then eventually he became the accountant general. You will all agree with me that he worked closely with the governor, then governor, who is now the FCT minister. And of course, I want to believe his hands were a little bit fettered, and so there are so many things, even if you oppose, because we had a governor who was impervious to criticisms. All those who reasoned that tangent to him, we are dealt with one way or the other, especially in the last governorship election and after assembly elections. We can hear the, we all know of the story of Farah Dagogo, we all know of uh, Chinyere Igwe, we all know of, um, we have a lot of them. Even hotels that were short, filling stations and so on. And most of them were hounded. What, 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 what was their crime? Simply because they declared interest to partake. And the former governor refused or failed to understand that even by thinking he was giving himself so much credit, he was inadvertently damaging his reputation and letting the world know or underscoring the fact that he was a dictator when he said he bought all the forms for PDP candidates and aspirants, as at that time, aspirants. And he sponsored all the elections. That is anti-democratic to start with. And that also goes to bolster the fact that it was more or less a dictatorship. It simply means only those you wanted to expire, expire, and only those you wanted emerged as candidates. That's the, that's the simple truth. And so all those who of their own wanted to buy forms were harassed one way or the other, and their businesses were badly affected. Some businesses were shot, some they accused of all sorts of trumped up charges. So each time he said he bought all the forms, he thought it was, it was like a glorifying thing. No, 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 no. He was an avatar, they damaging himself. But it's so unfortunate that he failed to appreciate that fact. Then he went further to also ask in his media chat if any of these persons can talk to their House of Assembly members and the House of Assembly members will listen. What does that tell you invariably? It simply means he is responsible for the continuous attitude of the assembly members. He is the one telling them what to do. They are just pawns on his chessboard, political chessboard. And why is that the case? Because if you ask him today to come and contest in River State, in a free and fair election, we all know what happened in the last Google election. We are all journalists, and I believe you have the facts, even if you are not going to come out openly because of what INEC did by stamping what I call the ineptitude. But if today you say, if he says he can tell his assembly members and they will do what they want to do, it simply means because he bought the forms for them, he sponsored them, they are tied to his apron strings. That's what it means. Now, what is the problem? 
ego. The FCT minister kept talking about gratitude, ingratitude, and so on. And I asked a simple question. Who is the worst ingrate? Maybe most of you have failed to take on the advisement. The issues in the last, let me say, from the days of Peter Hogan. On several occasions, he said that Governor Delay was responsible for his return as local government chairman. And he will owe his political height to Peter Hogan. Because, but for that return, re election, he wouldn't have been anywhere right there. He wouldn't have been the political force to be reckoned with. And he also went a step further on Peter Delay's birthday to say, God will punish him any day he goes against Peter Delay. He said, social media is everywhere. In his media chat, he denied it. He said he never said so. But the social media will not lie. It's for life. Today, he said, He's gone, he's part ways with Governor Peter Odell. And when they actually said, he never said, oh, he will never part ways. Is that not an act of ingratitude? Let us also go to Roti Mitibuka Meji. He was the chief of staff to Roti Mitibuka Meji, his principal. We are all seized of what happened between, for his own selfish ambition, For his own selfish ambition, we are all seeds of what happened between Roti Mitchell and Mitch and the FCT minister. What was the problem? And Mitch said it was the time for the river Rhine, the turn of the river Rhine. And he said no. That was the major problem. He was Roti Mitchell for staff. I don't have time today. The answer, the answer is no. Who was also responsible for his emergence as governor of River State? The Jonathans. Is he on terms today with Jonathans? No. I want, I'm addressing the integrity issue right now. This was the same guy who said he was never going to impose a governor on River persons. In fact, he advised Ambody to reject President Tinubu before, as at that time he wasn't the president. Tinubu's got fatherism in Lagos State. It's all over the social media, it's everywhere. You know, he loves the media, so it was a media chat. The same person who advised somebody to reject God fatherism is trying to impose God fatherism in River State. Like I said, he said he was never going to impose a candidate, a governorship candidate. Today, he's saying he was instrumental. He even bought the form for the governor. Is that not in position? The same person who said he was too big to be a vice president is today the FCT minister, accepting the office that is even lower than that of a vice president. The same person who said he was going to support whoever emerged as a candidate of PDP thinking he was going to emerge, went against Article because Article emerged and rained invectives on uh, Tambua, the former the then governor, who had to step down for Article also to, to emerge and called him a traitor. So if you talk of integrity, who lacks that integrity? Now he's inciting Intifada in River State. They asked him, he said, ah, if uh, the, the we are saying the governor should be independent, why wouldn't they accept it? After all, impeachment is constitutional. What are the crimes? What are the grounds for impeachment? I'll go into the eight-point agenda. What are the grounds for impeachment? What did he do? As at when the budget was even presented, because the issue of the budget was not even the grounds, the problem preceded the budget presented. That's why only four members were in the assembly as at when the budget was presented. They had the issues because the governor 
who had been pushed to the world resisted. He was asphyxiated, he resisted. You see, every spirit revolts at tyrant. And that is why the governor said, okay, there's no problem. Today you say you build bridges and so on, fly over, at what cost? Go to Delta State today. At what cost is the governor building how many flyovers? You build a flyover for 70 something million naira. That can be investigated. Why are you so much interested in the building of flyovers and you de emphasize human capital development? Have we asked questions? Because it keeps wanting. I build so many flyovers. Pensioners are not paid. No promotion. No employment. Those of you who are here when did the speech was a governor, it was simultaneous. While infrastructural development was taking place, we had the human development as well, human capital development. But you're interested in building flyovers because you know the pecuniary gains. You know, one easy way of fleecing the state try to drive, whether state or national, the same back on projects, whether they make sense or not. You're building flyovers for dead people, for the dead to fly over. They have to feed. You address the economy of the state first. And every day you say you build flyovers, you build flyovers, at what rate? Stratospheric. David Umayi replied in then. When he had the beef with, when he had the quarrel with David, David, David Umayi still said, you spend how much in building flyovers? And I spent less than that to achieve more. David Umayi said it, then they were all governors. So what's this hype about you build so many flowers and build so many flowers? What's this hype about that? We all know why you concentrated on those things. The present governor, what has he done? We're all aware of what he did in the last, uh, last December. We are even aware of the hike and in, um, increase in the salaries of local government workers. But these are the kind of people-oriented projects, policies we want. Even the bills that the so-called impostors, I say impostors, because we are all aware that once you defect, except there is schism in your party or there's a merger, you've lost your seat. There are decided cases. I also go into the eight-point agenda. We're all aware of that. They are still there. That's why I say they're impostors. And you say you should go ahead to represent that budget. And you now talk of the eight-point agenda that we all know was skewed in favor of the SCT minister. Because the only thing, the only thing that you can say is in favor of the governor was the issue of the impeachment. You had to say, Tari. But every other thing was in favor of the SCT minister. You're imposing commissioners on demand, a governor, and you're saying you must reappoint those persons. You must represent the budget. Meanwhile, there is a subsisting court judgment on that by Danago. Who made that budget legal? Because at that time, the court affirmed that you just had four members of the five members of the House of Assembly. And if you talk of a quorum, a quorum is based on the number, the member straight of the Assembly. These other ones had defected in the eyes of the court. And it was on that premise it passed a judgment. So what is wrong? If only for, because they had already defected. So what is wrong if you have some, you have just four members of, of the House of Assembly? Does that mean that the governor is not going to present a budget because you have just four members of the House of Assembly? And INEC has even refused to conduct uh, by elections or major elections they call it. So the governor had no choice but to present that budget. And the eight-point agenda is, is not a legal document. That's what you should also understand. It's a political so let the, it, it will have waking reminiscence of the Aburi. When Aburi will stand on Juku and Gowan. 
if we all recall, most of you were not born. If not, the likes all of you. <laughs> the civil war that led to the civil war. When Gowan got back, the super panthers told him, my friend, you just sold Nigeria. I'm just trying to summarize that. Look at this, look at this. It's not in the interest of the country. And he realized and said, no. And that's why we have the Nigeria we have today. And even there at that meeting, one or two persons refused to append their signatures. Even if the governor had come back to say, Mr. President said this, therefore this must be done, reverse people will revolt. Let me be honest with you. The support the governor is having today is not necessarily because He's been loved so much. Let me put it that way. As at that time, now probably because of his new policies and so on, yes, the love is increasing. But as at that time, to a lot of persons, to a lot of reverse persons who have been seared in the flame of oppression, dictatorship, it was like Kumbaya. Thank God. That era is past. A president once died in this country. And for the first time, Nigerians celebrated. Rather than cry, they were buying drinks for people. Happy. Not, not, not say a head of state. Happy that he died. It was almost a similar situation. The only difference is that in the case of um, the FCD minister, he didn't die. We don't pray for him to die as well. But people were begging for that tenor to come to an end. Because we were sweltering with the heat of dictatorship. Reverse persons were asphyxiated. And even when this governor came on board, a lot of persons were scared that he was going to continue. That it was the weakest third term in office. And so when we saw that difference, we said, oh, and that's why you see the concourse. Like he asked a question yesterday, was it yesterday? When he said, are they going to say this crowd is also red? Because they thought of the Thanksgiving. Are they going to say we, rent, we also rented this crowd? We're talking about when they came to the government house. They didn't rent them. It's just a referendum of the people's approval of a governor because of his policies. And an expression, a manifestation of this disapproval of his predecessor. They are just trying to compare. And so you see a man who has been able to hew us out of the mountain of despair. And that man is being appreciated. It's organic. He don't, look. I, as I speak to you here, on my honor, I don't, I, I shouldn't have said the Shogu is here because he's a pastor. So he might frown at what I'm going to say, being a pastor. But the government is not even aware that I'm having this break. I've not even talked to him. I've not called him one day. He has also not called me one day. But those who know Nawin Buddha will tell you that I don't need to be called to speak. I talk when I feel like or when I'm called upon to talk. That's my policy. And I'm happy with it. Very happy. I did not resign because of money. Few weeks to my resignation, I submitted my letter to Shegu. I told him, so, so time I'll go. Honestly, I was being given my money. A monthly basis. In fact, by this governor now, for where he was a DFO. None of It has to do with conscience. I just wasn't happy. And against all advice and so on, I said, no, I will go. So whenever I do these things, 
they, they gladdened my heart. They gladdened my heart because to me it's like a responsibility fulfilled to our society. And I'm very happy what the governor said when he said, because at the point we were thinking he was too quiet. And like Martin Luther King said, if you, if you become too cool that you end up in a deep freezer. And that's the end of you, when you end up in a deep freezer. Many people were mistaking his, his silence for weakness. And yesterday he thundered. Now, a lot of us were happy, they encouraged us. In fact, that's why we're even having the press briefing. Because before now you talk, he'll tell you, did I tell you to talk, leave him, his mouth. But I ask a question again. For how long will Phoebe's best tremble in silence before their owners? For those who did, uh, the gods are not to blame. For how long? That you supported me in my marriage does not mean you should sleep with my wife. That you supported me now does not mean you should dictate to my children what to do. You should, uh, you should observe your limitations, appreciate your limits. And that's why we are going to hear. We are here because of what I refer to as pestilence of Godfatherism and its resistance. The governor has said enough is enough. Rivers people have said enough is enough. If today Governor Sinfoba goes against the people, if it's anti people, too, you'll be shocked. After all, the same support he's getting today was even the same, if not more, when we get him on board in 2014, if not more. But there was this animosity because of the style of government. Impervious to criticisms. Now today you're angry with Dr. Peter Delil, you said he's your God on earth, simply because he said stop the impeachment process. It's not necessary, we can reconcile. That's why you're angry. You're a God, so it's a matter of least servant and least, least, least Lord. You're a God. Nobody can talk to you. What you do, whatever you do is correct. Right or wrong, people must be subservient. No, we're not going to accept that. Even those in Abuja, how many persons, how many human capital are we talking about? Every day, what? Construction, demolition, construction, demolition. That's what you hear. The Tinibu today, was not the same Tinibu he said, there wasn't the same APC he said, okay, who is even worse? You are in PDP. As a PDP governor, you're supporting an APC candidate. Your boy is less like a mole in that system. So, which integrity are we talking about? What integrity are we talking about? The same party you said you can never suggest, that one is uh, cancer. Four. Your own is malaria. It can be resolved. Today you say no. The only sin of the government is allow me to govern in the interest of the people. That's the only sin. And the farm minister said no. I brought you there. He said, after all, in other states, when they impose the governors, they provide all the commissioners. He said it. This was the same man who said, once I hand over, I will have nothing to do with governors, except my advice is being sought. You all covered that. So what is the sin of the government? I want to govern. Allow me to govern. Whatever agreement we have, okay, it could be met midway. You say no. Most of you will feel ignorant, but you're all aware that when the governor was sworn in newly, the minister was always in Port Harcourt. You all know why. There was even the rumor. The air was suffused with rumor of even how to, for him, before signing a mandate, the minister would have to approve. That's no governance. Because at the end of the day, they will not say, yes, of weekend's government. They will say, same for government in four years did nothing or did something. So a lot of us are clamoring for the support. Of, and any day, his anti-people will also march out. 
against him any day. Some of us supported the FCVC in 2014, 2015. Some of us worked for him. And when we got tired and we were not happy, we left. So any day too, the governor says, I'm now anti people I'm now a god. We'll also meet with forces in River State. This is not the first time. We've had the likes of, from uh, other judge to today. And it's also not going to be the last. So that's the whole essence of this conference. But I'm open to questions. Because I know and I can guess the kind of questions that will come. So I'm open. Yes. Okay. So my question is, uh, how is he, you know, uh, championing the actions of the state as in the environment? Who would like to, who would like to, who would like me to portray that? First and foremost, even in his chart two days ago, what did he say? He said, if I call my assembly member and tell him what to do, he will respect me and do it. What did that tell you? Self-explanation is lucid. If he had also called the same assembly to say, do not protest or do those things you're doing against the governor, the assembly member will not do. Because he said the assembly members respect him and they also have a right, it's a constitutional right, to commence impeachment proceedings against the governor. And he turned, if you remember, during OK Chinda's. Uh, uh, birthday party, this Thanksgiving. When he turned and said to the speaker, I mean, all the members, he said, continue to be independent and do what you're doing. It's self-explanatory. Don't forget that even on the floor, if you remember, they sang this song of, was it uh, week or whatever, that's that their song they sing in the house. I did not allege he said so. I did not allege he said so. Even his media chat, he said so. He has been saying it. What does that entail in the current political scenario of the state? That he is in control. And that is his anger. That even though he purchased the form for the governor, and against all odds, because he said most of those who are supporting the governor today, we are against him. That they were not going to serve master and serve boy. He said so. That all, it's funny that all those who are against the governor are today supporting the governor. I know he was referring to Austin Opera, Lee Eba, and Co. He said that. And his anger is that I bought this form. I'm instrumental to your emergence as a governor. So you should be holding to me. That's his thinking. And the governor is saying, yes, I accept and I appreciate the fact that you're instrumental. But I also need this latitude so that I could also leave my legacies. That's just a problem. You see, the problem is, is that they go battle. The FCT minister is a megalomaniac, full of grandiosities. No doubt about that. And it's quite impervious to challenge. He doesn't like any challenge. He's a god. He's a leech lord. Don't how dare you challenge me. Even with the way he thought, he said, let me see who do. Don't forget during the commissioning of one of the uh, judicial quarters when he said, let me see how an assembly member will challenge me. The, the records are there. Viral. He sees this as a demigod. And it's like you, 
in quote, a boy, he called him a boy, a boy like you trying to demystify me. That's the problem. But he's approaching his political Nadia. Nadia. <laughs> Now, what do you think the for the president of you as a, an arbitrator? There should be one of the things you think that if this or this action will be there, there's going to be a reason. That's the question. What do you think of the president of the United States and get that kind of report and say this is a total to you? What is the way forward to talk about this in the state of the president of the United Uh, it's quite easy, but it's a little bit naughty. Why is it naughty? It's because it has to do with the individual. The worst form of resolution, or let me just put it, the worst crisis to contain is ego crisis. But first and foremost, it has to do with your state of mind, your thinking, and it goes beyond rational thinking. It's more visceral than rational. Because when you say ego crisis, you, it's, it's, you, you, don't, you, don't, you don't longer rationalize the circumstances and the cause of it. It's all about how dare you, me, 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 and that's the problem. And that is why even in that media chat he said, I will never forgive the government. I will never reconcile with the government. I will never. Ordinarily, one would expect that. You call him a boy. Let's say he's your boy. He's your son. Peter Dilley tried to intervene. That's the beginning of the problem. Come, sit down. Let's talk. Okay, I'm sorry for this. I'm sorry for this. You strike a compromise, reach accommodation on an issue, and you forge on. But when it comes to the ego, you don't even want to sit down and talk to the baby because you want the person to grow well before you. That's the ego. So it becomes a little bit difficult to resolve. And the only way you can resolve the crisis is the feuding parties must swallow their pride and have the interests of the state at heart. If you don't have the interests of the state at heart, and you are only trying to project and protect your interests, you can never resolve this crisis. That's why I say it has to do with the genuine intentions of the feeding parties. And in this particular case, we all agree with that. I don't, it's not a matter of conjecture. He has said it, I will never. In other words, even if you sue for peace, I am not ready for that peace. That's what he said in his media chat. I will never. So how do you resolve it? You can drag your horse to the stream, but you can't force it to drink. And because you will never, like these bandits and kidnappers will say, I will never stop kidnapping because of the profit, the gains they make. You too now, you know how to protect yourself by locking your doors and knowing when to travel and when not to travel and so on. That is what the state government is trying to do. Okay, if you're ready for peace, we are fine. But if you say never, fine. We will also continue. Good. That's why he said, don't take my weakness for granted.